Did David kill Goliath with the anointing or by the anointing? And the answer, my answer is no. Contrary to what some people think, it was not because of the anointing or with the anointing <clears throat> or by the anointing that David killed Goliath. At least the Bible never said so. Or let me put it this way. Did David need to be anointed to be able to kill Goliath? And the answer is still no. David didn't need to be anointed to kill Goliath. David was anointed to be king. In other words, without the anointing, David couldn't have, wouldn't have been a king. Without the anointing, David could have or would have still killed Goliath. So without the anointing, it is difficult to be a priest. You cannot be an effective minister of the word or the sacraments of healing and deliverance. Without the anointing, you can't do any of that. Okay? Without the anointing, you can be a Dangote, you can be a Jeff Bezos, you can be a manufacturer, you can be a financially successful person. So in other words, there are things that the anointing is meant for, and there are things that the anointing is not meant for. So how did David kill Goliath? David killed Goliath with basically three things, and the anointing is not one of them. He killed Goliath with wisdom, with skill, and with a two. Okay? Wisdom here encompasses everything like smartness, cleverness, you know, intelligence, thinking outside the box, and all of that. I want to use that word thinking outside the box. David killed Goliath. Primarily, wisdom is one of the major things he used. Okay, Goliath was a giant, physically stronger than anybody in Israel. So the anointing did not suddenly make David physically stronger than Goliath. And that's why David did not fight him by going closer to him. Wisdom means to think outside the box. Wisdom to think outside the box. That's what David did. He didn't engage Goliath by a close encounter. Goliath would have just finished him off. And if you read that first book of Samuel, uh, when Goliath challenged the people of you see the way Goliath was described, he was not just formidable physically, he was also shielded by those days, you know, armors of war. So there was no way anybody could have, you know, reached Goliath with the conventional war tactics of those days. So nobody could confront him because all of them couldn't think outside the box. The only person who thought outside the box was David. He knew that conventional weapons and tactics wasn't going to have any effect on this guy. The guy, not only was he covered, he also had somebody who was bearing his own uh, shield, somebody who was acting like a defender to him. So how are you going to fight him? And all of that. So David had to think outside the box. He had to go through an unconventional way to deal with this food, this person. So Goliath trained on how to, you know, take care of sword, of javelin, of bow and arrows and all that. But he never thought about somebody fighting him with a sling or a catapult, as you could see. So think outside the box. Sometimes we need to think outside the box. And to think outside the box means to come out of the box. And for some of you, in fact, many of you believers, outside the box here now is the church. Many of you need to come outside the church and think. Think outside the box. You know, when God promised Abraham a child, the Bible says God took him outside. Abraham was inside. God took him outside and said, look up and see this. In other words, God took him outside a box that was preventing him from seeing the things that would let him understand what God was about to do in his life. And I think that's what many of us need to do. You need to get out of the church mentality. Many people think that the solution to all problems is in the church. The solution to all your problems is in the anointed man or woman of God. And that has kept you where you are, where you are. That has kept you in a vicious circle of failure, disillusionment, and all of that. You need to think outside the box. Get out of the church. Some solutions to life problems are in politics, some are in education, some are in acquiring skills, some are in meeting people out there. So think outside the box. That's what David did. He thought outside the box, and that is wisdom. Then secondly, skill. David, over the years, had master the skill of throwing the sling. You need to learn the skill and master it. So don't just acquire a skill. Be an expert at it. Be proficient at it. Be very good at it. Over the years, David not only acquired the skill of throwing the sling, he mastered it so he could use it to do anything. So master something. If you 
learn the skill of car repair master it so that when you repair the car of somebody he will refer you to another person and you know referral is the easiest the most cost efficient way of growing your customer or your clientele you know okay so learn a skill be very good at it that anybody who encounters you through that he doesn't want to change again rather wants to bring people to so david was good at the sling he mastered the skill then finally he chose a stone so to say the instrument of warfare he chose was you know something like i said he could use a stone if you know um ancient warfare the soldiers covered themselves the places that, that they were very vulnerable their chests you know the sheen and then the war helmets so goliath was covered completely you couldn't access him with a sword or arrow and anything but usually there is an opening here Okay, there was an opening for some reason, the opening maybe for convenience, and that was the only place you could actually give a little blow at him. So David had to choose something that suits that particular purpose, and it was a stone, a pebble. You know, so David used what? Wisdom to think outside the box, skill to use a particular tool that was necessary and suited for that particular you know assignment, and then the tool itself. These were the things he used. To conquer um, Goliath, and if you read First Samuel chapter seventeen, verse fifty, the Bible basically says David triumphed over the Philistine by a sling and a stone. Even though he had no sword, he rushed at him, took his own sword, and cut off his head. So the Bible mentions specifically that it was a sling and a stone that David used to triumph over Goliath. Some people may say, "Hey, is he saying that anointing is not important?" This is not what I'm saying. I'm saying that anointing has its specific assignment. God anointed men and women for something. David was anointed to be king. Wasn't anointed to kill Goliath. Killing Goliath was something that came along the way. And like I said, he didn't need the anointing to kill Goliath before he was anointed. He had already slaughtered a lion and a bear. These two are even more dangerous than a Goliath because they will spring at you with surprise. So you see, he didn't need the anointing to kill the enemies, okay? All he needed was wisdom, skill, and what? And tools. And I'm telling you the same thing. So that's how David slaughtered, or how, that's how David defeated Goliath. And that's how people, there are people today who are slaughtering the Goliaths of financial problems by their skills. And they are not making noise about it. But some of you are hiding yourself in the church. You are closing yourself in the church, following men and women of God who have anointing, member to member, thinking that that's where your salvation for other problems are going to come from. The anointing is meant for spiritual issues. If killing Goliath was a spiritual issue, it wasn't David that should have done it. It should have been Samuel because he was the most spiritual person in Israel. Then he was one even doing anointing. Okay, so the anointing is for spiritual purpose. All right. For other issues in life, God has given things like wisdom. God has given things like education. God has given things like politics, how to organize the society, like skills, affliction, and all of that. That is where you are going to get victory in these other areas of life. Then for things for like deliverance, like encounter with God and all of that, hey, that is where the anointing, you know, comes in. Jesus said, "The Spirit of the Lord has been given upon me, for He has anointed me to do what bring good news." To the poor to set uh, captives free. These are those who are spiritually, you know, in captive. Don't think of any other thing outside there. So, the point of this message is not to demean the anointing. Without the anointing, I can't even be talking to you. Without the anointing, no minister of God can function. Okay? But that's for the spiritual sphere. But the other things in life, go get wisdom, go get a skill, and then get the appropriate tools for your equipment, and you are going to be slaying Goliaths. And that's how you triumph, like David. So I hope that this message helps, uh, you know, um, some of us who have been myopic and all of that. See, anointing will not do for you what skill is designed to do for you. The sooner you know this, the better for it. Anointing will not do for you what skill or education or intelligence is supposed to do for you. It is the same God who has given the anointing that has also made the acquisition of wisdom, intelligence, education is also possible. So remember that, and I think you're gonna be fine. Thank you. To watch full videos and get notifications for new ones, please subscribe to my YouTube channel.
God bless you.